We've told the story of the world-famous Siamese twins from Southeast Asia, who settled in North Carolina and between them raised two large families, members of which still live there. Today we have a story about a homegrown sideshow performer from Kentucky known as the Kentucky River Giant. Hello, podcast listeners. I'm Steve Gilley, along with Rod Mullins, and you're listening to Stories, A History of Appalachia. Well, Steve, I'm not going to give anything away about this story. I'm just going to say that this man truly led an extraordinary life when he left eastern Kentucky. And, you know, he was known, as you said, as being the Kentucky River Giant. But, my gosh, the people that he met, and we're talking about dignitaries, world leaders. This man came from eastern Kentucky and rubbed elbows with some of the greatest figures, I guess, in, in history of the late 1800s, didn't he? He did indeed. And and this extraordinary man had an extraordinary name as well. Martin Van Buren Bates, obviously named after President Martin Van Buren. But anyway, Mr. Bates was born on November 9th, 1845 at Kona in Letcher County, Kentucky, to John Wallace Bates and his wife, Sarah. Or November 9th, 1837, take your pick, for both dates are given for his birthday. Mm-hmm. The Bates family owned a large farm near Whitesburg, Kentucky, in Letcher County at Kona on the North Fork of the Kentucky River. There, John and Sarah raised a large Appalachian family of seven boys and five girls, with Martin being the baby brother, thus given the name Babe by the rest of his family. Babe would be an appropriate name for Martin for only a short time, though, Rod. Yes, it would, Steve, because as he got older, he grew. He just didn't grow a little. He grew a lot. He grew some more. Soon, it was impossible to deny that he was going to be bigger than his big brother and sisters, not to mention his parents. By the time he was 13 years old, get this, Steve, he weighed 300 pounds and was as tall as a full-grown man, but he wasn't finished. Now, I'm just going to say this, Steve. Mm -hmm. If Kentucky basketball had been popular back then... I'm sure they would have been knocking on his door very early oh, on yeah. at the age of 13 to get him. But he continued to grow until he was 28 years old, ending up an amazing, get this, 7 feet 11 inches tall and weighing nearly 500 pounds. Now, folks, the pictures I've seen of him, he's solid. Now, according to folks, it was said that one of his boots could hold a half bushel of shelled corn, about 28 pounds of the grain. Bates went to Washington County, Virginia to attend Emma Henry College and became a school teacher. Not long after, the Civil War began, and he soon left the profession to enlist as a private in the 5th Kentucky Infantry. Now, his huge size soon caught the attention of opposing Union troops, who referred to the Confederate giant as a man large enough to make five men with the fight of 50. He and his unit saw action throughout the Appalachian Mountains of Virginia, Kentucky, and Tennessee, distinguishing himself enough to be made a captain. And it was at one of the numerous battles at the Cumberland Gap that he was wounded and captured, then sent off to be imprisoned at Camp Chase in Ohio. He didn't stay there for long, though, as he managed to escape and make his way back to his unit to fight another day. When the war ended, Martin found that it was impossible for him to stay for long in Kentucky because of the bad blood caused by the war. So he made his way to Cincinnati, where he put his unusual size to use by joining the John Robinson Circus and its cabinet of curiosities, what we would call the sideshow and what some might call the freak show. Now, along with Bates came his cousin, John Wright, someone who was a shootist. He performed as a marksman and shootist, and he would perform on the back of a galloping horse while shooting targets with his pistol. He was known in Appalachia as Devil John Wright and later known as the most famous U.S. Marshal in eastern Kentucky. He was the inspiration for the character Devil Judd Tolliver in the book Trail of the Lonesome Pine by John Fox Jr. Martin Van Buren Bates made the circus his home for the next five years, traveling throughout North America under the watchful eye of his promoter, Judge H.P. Ingalls. And it was Ingalls who brought the Kentucky River Giant the greatest gift of his life. He and Ingalls were talking about organizing a tour of Europe to introduce Bates and his great stature to the people of that continent. Finally, Bates accepted Ingalls' European tour plan, and in 1871, Bates traveled to Elizabeth, New Jersey, to meet him and finalize the plan. 
While there, Ingalls introduced his client to the ultimate showman, P.T. Barnum. With Barnum was one of his sideshow attractions, a woman named Anna Swan of Nova Scotia, Canada, reputed to be the tallest woman in the world, and in fact, Rod, a few inches taller than Martin Van Buren Bates. Hmm. Before the end of the year, Miss Swan would become Mrs. Bates as the two fell in love and married. Now, here are some entries from Martin Van Buren Bates' journal referring to his time with Anna on the tour. April 22nd, 1871. Couple left New York on the city of Brussels of the Inman Line, accompanied by Judge H.P. Ingalls. May 2nd, 1871. Arrived at Liverpool and spent a week at the Washington Hotel. May 19, 1871. Arrived in London and gave a reception at the Willis Room on King Street to editors and medical men exclusively. May 29, 1871. Gave first public reception at same place. June 2, 1871. Ordered by royal command to appear before Her Most Gracious Majesty, Queen Victoria, at Buckingham Palace. The Queen expressed her pleasure in the warmest terms and presented us with several valuable presents. And one of those presents was the dress material for Anna's wedding dress, including yards of satin and lace. The giant couple were married on June 21, 1871, at the Church of St. Martin's in the field on Trafalgar Square by the Reverend Rupert Cochran of Halifax, Nova Scotia. The bride was given away by Judge Ingalls. Later that day, the two gave a private reception for the Prince of Wales, the Grand Duke Vladimir of Russia, and Prince John of Luxembourg. Then they appeared before the Queen two times, at Buckingham Palace and at Windsor Castle. The couple continued on the European tour. Then on May 19, 1872, Anna gave birth to a stillborn daughter that weighed 18 pounds and was 27 inches long. And the couple donated the body to science. In July 1874, they ended their time in Europe and returned to America, where they took another tour, this time in the Southwest. After they finished that tour, Martin bought a farm for the couple in Seville, Ohio, and there they built a house designed just for them and known locally as the House the Giants Built. And there at that farm, he raised cattle, horses, and exotic animals. In 1878 and 1879, the two giants joined the W.W. Cole Brothers Circus Menagerie and Museum. Another child was born to the couple in 1879, a boy who died hours after birth. This child was 28 inches long and weighed 23 pounds. After this, the two returned to Seville, Ohio and the farm life, and they were very happy for 10 years. In August 1889, Anna became ill and died. When Martin ordered her casket, the company sent the wrong size, causing the funeral to be postponed when he had to reorder. Now, because of this, he made a fateful decision for himself. He had his own casket specially built, and then he stored it rot in his barn until it was needed at his own death. Hmm. Anna was buried in Mound Hill Cemetery beneath a large monument of a woman carved from the finest white marble, which was mounted on an 18-foot-tall triple granite base. Martin later remarried Annette LaVon Weatherby, daughter of the Reverend J.W. Weatherby of Troy, Ohio. Ten years later, they left the farm and moved into a townhouse in the town of Seville, where they remained until Martin Van Buren Bates' death in 1919. He was buried next to Anna beneath that huge statue. The headstone reads, Martin Van B., Anna H., Babe, Sister. Now here's a side note for you. Martin Van Buren Bates wasn't the only Bates brother to gain a bit of popularity. You see, his older brother, Bob Bates, had become a banker, landowner, and politician, and was elected to the Kentucky Senate. And near the end of his life, he marked a most unusual milestone— as we'll relate in this article from the Morristown Gazette newspaper of March 1st, 1916. Perhaps there is not a more remarkable man in the South than Uncle Bob Bates, Kentucky's well-known pioneer and eccentric character, who a few days ago rounded out his 96th year at his quaint old home on the headwaters of Rock House, 10 miles from here in this Ledger County town. Uncle Bob, a few weeks ago, became the proud father of a big, bouncing boy, <laughs> which came to bless his home. 
this being the 24th child born to him. An unparalleled record. Now, I have to also add this, Steve. Mm -hmm. Uncle Bob had been married three times to his first wife. Nine children were born. To his second wife, eight children were born. And to his last and present wife, seven children had been born, making altogether 24 kids. And as they say in the Bible, Rod, be fruitful and multiply. And Bob took that admonition to heart. I, you know, I was going to say <laughs> that. I'm, I'm glad that you brought that up. You know, I, I hear that verse, go forth and multiply. Well, Uncle Bob sure did his part, didn't he? The thing was, we didn't have any descriptions in here of any children that were, you know, the size of Martin Van Buren Bates, that's for sure. But still, 24 kids and being the father of one just a few weeks after his 96th birthday, that's an accomplishment. And Bob went on to his reward in 1921 at the age of 101. But wow, this podcast that's... is not about Bob. That was just a little extra part about that. Yeah. Martin Van Buren Bates was an awesome person. One thing I wonder about, and I did not find this out by looking anywhere in any of the records, he died in 1919, early in 1919. Mm -hmm. Do you think he was a victim of the Spanish flu? You know, that's that's been a possibility that has been raised. Uh, there has been a possibility of that uh, happening because... Um, you know, I know that there's people that have, um, I guess at least claimed to have said he was sick, very mm -hmm. sick in his last few days or something like that. And, uh, may have made mention of it or may have, uh, maybe, uh, associated it with his death, but here's an even more shocking thought, Steve. Yes. Uh, this kind of floored me. I, I never knew anything about this until of course we, and we're not given an endorsement on here for ancestry, but, my wife is a relative to Martin Van Buren Bates. Oh, really? Wow. Yes, she is. And it actually goes back into, uh, you mentioned John Wallace Bates there, senior there mm -hmm. at the beginning of it, and his wife, Sarah. And that was actually of some relative to my wife's great-grandmother. And so we started getting into this a little bit more, and then I found the connection with Devil John Wright, which kind of goes on to another story that I've told you about off air, but you know I'm not going to go into it here. But uh, Devil John Wright, of course, was very well known in this area. But you know, like I said at the beginning of the podcast, Martin Van Buren Bates left Southeast Kentucky and he went north, and then from that point on, he made a name for himself that really I don't think he gets a lot of. I don't know, maybe notoriety or play out of this, but he was one of the most unique. I think Queen Victoria referred to him as probably one of the most gentlemanly men that she had ever come across, especially for such a giant. She referred to him and also Anna Bates as just such a unique couple. I know that there were some uh, claims of that also later on after they had met, but uh, the queen held them in almost like royalty, the way that they were, they were treated while they were in London. And folks, that's the story of the Kentucky River giant, Martin Van Buren Bates. Another part of the history of this place we call home, Appalachia. Thanks for listening. You can subscribe to the Stories Podcast at Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Google Play, Spotify, Deezer, iHeartRadio, and more. Till next we meet, y'all take care of yourselves. So long, everybody. Everybody.